So this is my little Flying Rivers of the Rainforest uh, biotic pump. Uh, their Flying Rivers uh, biotic pump uh, little video. And it start uh, this. I first became aware of this about a year ago. I read about two uh, Russian scientists who uh, suggested that the reason the Brazilian rainforests and other rainforests and including one in Siberia and probably some of the stuff in Canada too is so um, so wet is because it's actually sucking in uh, air from the ocean so the the, uh, the, the, um, the transpiration from the trees is actually sucking in air and um, they made their theory maybe 2005, 2004 and presented it 2006 to about 2009 and there was major major problems presenting it because there was a big amount of resistance from other scientists to the idea and uh, they couldn't actually find a whole bunch of fault with it but they resented the idea anyway. Uh, in the rainforest in Brazil you can go maybe a thousand kilometers in and it is just as wet as at the coast and that's perplexing because the theories suggest that it should be drier the further in that you get. So uh, these people made up the biotic pump theory and Flying Rivers is uh, a name to um, what happens that was suggested by um, a Brazilian scientist. So a Brazilian weather scientist called it the Flying Rivers and biotic pump is because it's uh, a pump that's created by uh, biology. So I'm just going to give you the basics of um, what's going on and um, you know you can decide for yourself if you think it's rubbish or not. Anyway over the ocean there's generally low pressure because um, there's uh, transpiration and um, Sorry, one thing. Evaporation of water. And water has a molecular weight of 18. And air has a molecular, a molecular weight of uh, 29. And this means that when uh, water vapor goes into air, it makes the air lighter. And uh, that lowers the pressure. And over the desert, uh, there's a, um, by day, it's uh, the, the temperatures are in the region of 10 to 40 degrees so by day you're talking about up to 40 degrees centigrade and that would mean because of the heat uh, lowers the pressure so um, uh, the um, relationship is uh, it's called PV over NRT is uh, pressure and volume it's a universal gas law anyway the, um, 40 degrees by day means that it's low pressure by day uh, lower than the sea so by day you get a sea breeze you get a breeze from the sea going towards a desert area and then at night because there's no clouds over the desert it cools right down and you can get as low as 10 or even 5 degrees depending on where you are in the desert so that means uh, at night time you're talking about high pressure so you get this cycling effect so by day you're getting uh, air coming in from the sea coming around in a loop uh, as it heats up and then by night it reverses so by night the air is going out to sea cooling down and um, so you get this kind of circulation reversing circulation by day and by night that just wastes energy so what happens is even if the average pressure over the desert is, is lower there's this barrier to at the coast to uh, a constant even airflow so now we are going to describe the um, say Brazilian or uh, Congo rainforest so the general the temperature instead of 10 to 40 I don't know the ocean temperature I didn't find that out it is uh, 20 to 30 so by nice around 20 up to 30 by day so that's uh, a smaller difference in temperature and the trees are transpiring water so as long as there's water under the trees and on the trees leaves they're 
transpiring it. They're um, uh, using the water uh, to uh, to move uh, chemicals to produce sugar and uh, energy for themselves. So they are transpiring at a rapid rate. And it turns out that they've measured it and the rainforest is transpiring eight times quicker than the ocean. So that means that, um, you know, say maybe nine times out of ten, the pressure over the rainforest is lower than over the ocean. And this causes low pressure over the rainforest low pressure over the ocean but slightly lower so you get uh, air coming in and uh, so the air uh, say one day is coming this way towards the rainforest now so there's it's producing I'm not sure entirely so the trees are about 40 meters height as opposed to maybe a meter height max in the desert or one to two meters instead of 40 and this means there's all this area to uh, transpire versus, you know, um, uh, maybe five, six centimeters at, at the ocean level if it's windy. So you've got all this transpiration coming up from the forest and lowering the pressure because um, the water vapor is uh, 18. And as it gets higher, it becomes clouds because it starts to condense. It condenses on dust particles and mold particles and spores from um, from fungi and on pollen. So it comes up, it condenses to form clouds, and cloud formation might start at maybe 11, 12 o'clock. And um, so it condenses to form clouds. Cloud ceiling is about 11 kilometers clouds start producing rain at three to four kilometers. Now when the water vapor becomes rain it's gone from the atmosphere and that must mean that at this height here three to four kilometers you've got a low pressure area and I think that this is where the air is being sucked in. At three to four kilometers high is where the air is going to come in from the ocean for the most part it'll be coming in a little here too but this is where it's going to be and this is the main difference between uh, what's going on in the desert which is getting as much energy probably as the forest and um, and um, it's just it's just wasted at this interface uh, between the ocean and the land uh, whereas here we have this constriction so you have this smaller tube almost where the, uh, the um, air gets transported so you have clouds maximum cloud formation is about maybe 4 p.m. and it's starting to cool off almost at that stage because there's uh, there's less uh, sunshine in the forest it's starting to rain and the biotic pump is at its greatest probably capacity at uh, 3 to 4 and you've got now you've got clouds over for night and the clouds are going to hold in the heat somewhat compared to the desert so this means that your uh, low pressure here just because they are stopping the heat from escaping the clouds are reflecting the heat is going to remain and this means this terrible cycling which happens between the desert and the ocean isn't going to happen. So biotic pump means that you have this uh, almost constant airflow uh, across the rainforest and it continues to wherever the other side of the rainforest will be and continues on and in South America it ends up the rain continues to fall over agricultural land as well as over the rainforest. So ju it's not just pumping water for the rainforest, it's pumping water for Paraguay and uh, Argentina too. Uh, what else? Oh yes, um, another thing which might be happening from the biotic pump is you are uh, maybe the part of the ocean closest to the Brazilian coast is getting more uh, evaporation uh, than 
would normally be expected. So the biotic pump is probably contributing to a small extent to ocean currents too. It's evaporating some water from the surface which makes the surface a little bit cooler and a little bit saltier and cool salty water will sink. So in theory, in possibility, the biotic pump is actually uh, creating a little bit of an ocean current too. And the amount of energy that this moves is uh, quite a lot. It's, uh, it's moving energy from the part of the ocean, the forest, and eventually down south to Argentina, um, uh, uh, Paraguay, Chile, um, further down south. It's moving energy and it's moving air. So, um, well, it's, um, so, so this is the. This might be the. Um, the. Um, what was I going to say? Um, so, oh yeah. So the the rain, the amount of water in the air. I have this written down. I've forgotten my point. But it's up to about sixteen uh, grams per um, cubic meter. So it's not that much water, but it's. Uh, it's the difference between uh, so one pound five wet air at say ninety percent humidity and around twenty five or thirty degrees is about one percent water one point five percent water vapor or one point five percent lighter I beg your pardon and that would mean uh, this is the equivalent to air at four point five degrees warmer you know in in terms of the amount of energy that it would take to uh, do this uh, if you were solely heating it. So anyway, I think I've gone on way too long. I'm going to stop it now, and I hope it makes sense to people. Thank you.